Dogota, Chi, Mark Ford, Gonsei. Hello everyone, my name is Mark Ford. I just greeted you in my ancestral Apache language. I am the Director of Native and Tribal Partnerships at Feeding America. We're glad to have you join us today. Uh, this presentation and cooking demonstration is to honor Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, formerly known as Columbus Day. Many states and, and companies in the United States have adopted Indigenous Peoples Day to honor the people who lived in this continent uh, during the time that Columbus came to this area. Uh, it's a great way to recognize the traditions and the cultures that existed prior to colonization. Today we have a special event. We have two wonderful chefs who are going to be um, presenting uh, about the indigenous foodways that existed prior to colonization, the food that was grown and cultivated in this continent by indigenous people. And they're going to do a wonderful cooking demonstration, incorporating some of those foods into modern cuisine. We'd like to introduce to you today our Native American chefs, Dr. Lois Ellen Frank and Chef Walter Whitewater. Um, Dr. Frank is Kiowa and uh, has been working in the food industry, presenting Native American uh, cuisine and culture, incorporating it into modern cuisine. Uh, Chef Walter is from the Navajo Reservation, uh, from Pinyon, and uh, has great experiences, traveled worldwide. Both of them have traveled around the world and presenting on television, James Beard Ward of Winners, and, and just incredible, wonderful people. We're gonna learn a lot from them today. So we welcome them and welcome you to our presentation, and we wish you a very happy Indigenous Peoples Day. So we're just gonna talk about the whole menu that we're gonna be serving today. We're actually gonna do four courses with homemade cornbread. Um, what we usually do is Walter does the savory and I do the baking and the desserts. So we're gonna start with the four directions. We call this the four directions and it's uh, organic zucchini that's been seared and then cooked in the oven. It's going to have heirloom tomato sauce and I can hundreds of pounds every year. So actually this will be the last weekend for this season that I'll can. And uh, we're gonna have toasted pumpkin seeds on that. And then sumac, and this is a three leaf sumac. It's an edible powder. How do you say it in your language? The chilchin. Chilchin. So it's the sumac powder and that's gonna be sprinkled on. And we do the four directions to call in the four directions to bless everybody that we feed because uh, we want everybody, right, mm -hmm. to be blessed in a good way as we eat. Then we're gonna go into organic corn soup and we're gonna do a paint and that paint has a roasted red bell pepper with a little chipotle chili and we're gonna paint and we're gonna use some symbolism, again, uh, representing that indigenous knowledge spiraling outward and the four generations, child, adolescent, middle-aged and elder and we want all of those generations to continue the knowledge that we have in all of our lineages. Uh, we're gonna be serving a white cornbread and a blue cornbread. Uh, this corn comes from Tamaya. Tamaya is the native name for Santa Ana Pueblo, and I buy the corn from them, uh, and it's a wonderful corn that they grind in their mill. Uh, I'll be driving down next week to get more because we're running low. And then we're gonna do the bison stuffed chili as the entree course with a little tomato and our beautiful roasted potatoes from Farmer's Market. And then for dessert, we're doing a dessert duo, uh, celebrating those trade routes with the pine nut and dark chocolate. So we're doing uh, a pinyon chocolate cake and we're doing a baked berry crisp letting those berries start to release that pectin and that's going to be topped uh, with a little crisp topping and then a choke cherry sauce we hand gather and process our own choke cherries uh, organic peach sauce and a little prickly pear syrup that we buy from a husband and wife team uh, that harvests a little bit to the south of us so the menu is amazing and it's going to be nutritious it's going to be delicious notice lots of plants and uh, actually the the chocolate and the crisp are both uh, plant-based we took out the sugar and the butter and and we've made them a little healthier and uh, a little more ancestral in their origin
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make our herb roasted potatoes. Chef Walter's gonna show you how to cut them. These are from our local farmer's market and we have three color of potatoes today. We have a, a beautiful red and a white and a blue and these are all grown by Jose Gonzalez from Gonzalez Farm. We have uh, all these beautiful colors. Potatoes, of course, one of those magic eight of our indigenous foods and we're going to just season these. We have some herbs here. We have thyme, we have rosemary from our garden, and a little bit of salt and pepper. So we're just gonna season these, and we're gonna use a little oil. We're using sunflower oil because of course sunflower is indigenous to the Americas, so try and keep it uh, as native as we can. We're gonna use sunflower oil. And we're just going to put a little sunflower oil over the potatoes with our herbs, Chef Walter. And then we're going to just toss those together. We're using actually an indigenous salt. This is a little bit of the Zuni salt, which comes from the southern part of the state. Uh, the uh, Zuni tribe is one of the keepers of the uh, salt that we have here in New Mexico. Right, Chef? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just toss these. And then these are gonna get roasted in an oven. We like to do about 425. Let those potatoes get nice and crispy and then that's gonna be served with the bison stuffed chili. It brings out really beautiful colors when you put uh, mixed potatoes, you know? Yeah, look at the not purple. Yeah. Not only that, it makes a, a flavor even, even better. Just put maybe just a little bit more herb in it. It's like making an offering here, you know, to the plants. And then we'll just put those on a sheet tray. And these are gonna get roasted and put in the oven to be served with our bison chili. Look at that, beautiful. Bison, of course, is the word for buffalo. Many of you may know our bison as buffalo. And that's gonna be stuffed inside a New Mexico green chili. So we went to farmer's market and we got some green chilies. And the first thing we're gonna do in preparation of this dish is show you how to roast them. So these are grown by Matt Romero. He has a farm in northern New Mexico, mm -hmm. and these are his mild chilies. So we're gonna trust that the farmer is telling us the truth when he says that they're mild because they tend to be hot here in the state of New Mexico. But these are all, we're at a perfect time of year. These are beautiful chilies. You can see the smooth skin. Actually, this one's starting to turn red. We're using this little grill and the grill is actually going to have a flame. We call this the open flame method. And what's fascinating about these chilies is that they are part of the magic eight. And there were eight ingredients that native people gave to the world. And most people don't know that, right Chef? Yes. What's important to remember is that before 1492, Native people had a diverse cuisine. That cuisine was rich. That cuisine was nutritious. It was delicious. And it included the magic eight. The magic eight are corn, beans, squash, chili, tomato, potato, vanilla, and cacao. So if you think about that, that means that the Italians did not have the tomato. The Irish did not have the potato. In Britain, they had their fish, they didn't have their chips. Russia had no potatoes. There was no vodka from potatoes. No chilies in any Asian cuisine anywhere in the world, and no chilies in any East Indian curries. And neither the French, or in Switzerland, or in Belgium, did they have vanilla or chocolate. So the world was a completely different place. And these are all foods that native people gave to the world and we celebrate that. And that's gonna be the next book. We're working on our first plant forward, plant-based book. We've been testing recipes. And so this is very exciting for us because we really want our native people to be healthy. And as we saw in the last year, year and a half, uh, native people are, have the highest rate of diabetes, uh, highest rate of obesity, and COVID really affected them. So we really push a plant-forward diet, lots of beautiful plants that are indigenous for health and wellness, because we want all people to be healthy. And the easiest way to do that is to eat smaller amounts of meat, 
with lots of plants. And these are all plants that native people had and that native people gave to the world. So the first thing is you wanna put those on is, and we're gonna use little tongs. And so back to the magic eight. So of the magic eight, chilies are the most medicinal. One green chili has the equivalent in vitamin C of six oranges. Wow. You can use it topically, right? You can go to a drugstore and buy an ointment or a cream. What is in that cream? Chili oil. Chilies are good for the digestion. Chilies have vitamin A and vitamin C, lots of nutrients, antioxidants. It's amazing how healthy they are. So uh, Chef Walter's gonna start to get garlic ready because that's gonna be next. We're gonna do onion and garlic. But what we wanna do with these chilies is we want to blacken the skin. And so by blackening the skin, we're gonna peel them. They're gonna sit, it's called sweating. And when we peel that skin off, we access the oil. The oil is called capsicum. Capsicum is the flavor, but it's also the medicine. So uh, very important. And we're gonna go ahead and roast uh, several of these. Look at that beautiful red one starting to turn red. And here in New Mexico, when the chilies, after they're green and we harvest uh, as much as we can, a lot of us freeze uh, the blackened chilies, we hang them in ristras. The ristras are, are red chilies and they're hung to dry. So what Chef Walter's doing is getting fresh garlic ready and uh, we're going to um, show you how to blacken that. It's going to soften the flavor of that garlic just a little bit, right Chef? Yes. Uh, why do we like the softened garlic? To give it its flavor yeah. and right now I'm just peeling this um, garlic here. Sometimes you can roast it on on the flame here or you can do it on, on a skillet too, you know. We'll show them in a yeah. skillet, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's really easy, uh, adds flavor. And so what do we want as chefs? It's all about the flavor, guys. So we do a lot of roasting, a lot of toasting, uh, a lot of things to really bring out those uh, flavors in our food. So very, very important. And so the chilies, they actually do something else. When you eat them, uh, increases your heart rate. And as your heart rate increases, more blood flows through the body. And then you may get a little perspiration. Some people feel a little flush. That's because more blood is flowing through the body. So what happens then, and only chocolate and exercise do what chilies do, so they're in good company, is the body, the brain releases an endorphin. And the endorphin is our body's painkiller. It's our feel-good mechanism. So when you eat the chili, Signal goes to the brain and it releases an endorphin and you feel good. So native people have been using chilies literally for thousands of years. Uh, it's one of our most medicinal plants and we cook with chilies uh, all the time, right? So what Chef Walter's doing now is he's taking a cast iron pan. We're using sunflower oil, tiny bit of oil, and he's just going to blacken those uh, garlic for flavor and you can see, see how that little tip, so this is called customizing, where I just customize the uh, blackening on the chili. We wanna blacken all the way around uh, because we're gonna be peeling them. So we just keep turning the chilies. So once the chilies are blackened, and this guy's almost ready, right Chef? Mm -hmm. Is we're gonna put it in a, a metal bowl. You could use a glass bowl as well. We have it covered with a little bit of plastic wrap and this is called the cool down or sweating process. And the reason we do that is to let that skin start to separate from the chilies. So see this perfectly roasted chili? We will put it in our bowl, get our other chilies ready. Beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Wanna do one more? Should we do one more chili? Mm -hmm. Pick a good one, look at that. Beautiful chili. So we were at Farmer's Market uh, early in the morning and uh, getting these beautiful chilies. As soon as we have a frost, the chilies, it'll be gone for the season, right? So we try and use as much local as we can. And Chef Walter's gonna share a little story about some of the foods he grew up with and why, as Native Chef, it's important to promote health and wellness in our communities. I just wanna tell a little story about um, how I came about of cooking um, back back in the days, and I just by watching, and then this type of chili, my um, the people from um, from here, maybe it's a Rio Grande or somewhere, you know, that uh, um, the people that live. So anyway, um, they used to bring um, the chilies, fruit, and all the 
the, the things that they made, bread, oven bread and all that, they bring it out to where I live on Navajo Reservation. So there was always an exchange. There's always a trade that, that, that we did. This is what they brought. And so it was always an exchange for the animal. They loved our jewelries. They loved the rugs, what we did and, and the culture. But the elders were concerned about the diet's going to change. And they live off the land, you know. Someone brings back a deer back to your village, you know. They don't, it's not only about one family, it's about sharing with others. And those ancestral foods are what is so healthy. The ancestral foods, what our elders, what our ancestors ate, we didn't see any of the things that we see today. We didn't see the heart disease, we didn't see the obesity, we didn't see the diabetes. So it really is about taking these ancestral foods that have always been around and using it for health and wellness. And what is the thing we love to say? Food is our medicine, right? Mm -hmm. And this, we work with a nurse because we do a lot of uh, diabetes education in our communities. And I love this because she says, instead of pharmacy with a PH, we say pharmacy with a F-A. So F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. And our farms, our gardens, our indigenous foods, this is the key. And so these are some of the, the things that we like to promote. So you can make it vegan, you can make it vegetarian, uh, or you can use uh, one of our ancestral meats, which would be uh, bison. You could do ground elk or deer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, in Walter's community, uh, maybe ground lamb. We, we call this sort of a native or diet. So eating what the ancestors ate, uh, lots of plants and small amounts of our indigenous meats. So I'm gonna move this chef and uh, let's go ahead and show them how to cut an onion and we'll start cooking our meat. So we have a cast iron pan that we've been heating and we're gonna take this pan. We're done with the chilies for now. So we'll put these in the background here. I just put a little bit of oil in here. The buffalo is very lean, you know, you have to add back into um, when you're cooking it. Other than that, it's gonna burn, you know. And so this is just a, look how beautiful the, the I almost said the lamb, but hey, it, it's a bison, you know? And so this is just a way that I, that I prepare. And this is locally raised uh, bison that we're using. Uh, they sell it at uh, our farmer's market and, and we also buy from uh, some purveyors. So let's show them how to cut an onion and then we'll cut our tomatoes. So we're gonna take a, a white onion and chef's gonna show you how uh, chefs cut this and there's a little bit of a secret way to this, right? You wanna talk yeah. about that? When, we, when you're in the kitchen, safety always comes first. Safety. So many times as you, you know, work in the kitchen and when you start cooking, who knows how many times you'll cut yourself and you're beginning to realize, hey, what's the safest way to do this? So you take the, the bottom and then leave the, the top. Leave it on, then I just take it apart, cut in half and then take the top skin off. And uh, we don't throw anything away. You wanted to talk a little bit about what we do, and we would encourage all of you to do that. We compost, and that means that we put these things, the garlic and the onion skins, back to the earth, right? And that helps our soil, that helps our gardens, that helps our plants. We can look back in time and say, all of this was always done. So tell them why you're doing that. What I usually do, I make a, a small dice and make sure you have your knuckles out so that way you don't cut yourself. So you have to balance it, you know, how much you need and all that. So we're gonna go ahead and add the onions while the meat's browning, let all that flavor, we're gonna let those onions uh, start to caramelize a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And then once the uh, onions and the meat starts to brown, then we'll add the garlic. And then Chef Walter's gonna cut the tomatoes. Remember, my chilies are still cooling down. So once they cool down, uh, we will show you how to peel them. And there's a kind of a secret to that, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, the chilies are medicinal. So uh, I like to just use my, my hands, but I will say that uh, we did an event and we cooked uh, 500 of these, and I thought, oh, I'm never gonna get arthritis on my hands, but after about the first 100 chilies, I did feel a tingling sensation. So can you oversaturate a good thing? 
Yes, right? And Walter's a little bit sensitive, so you want to, everybody's tolerance is different. So you want to learn where your tolerance is and when you have to put on those uh, gloves because that oil will penetrate and that oil will uh, oversaturate, right? A good thing. All right. So let's add a little garlic. Excellent. This is our blackened garlic. Beautiful. And add our tomatoes. These are, again, are uh, either... Uh, tomatoes that we've grown or local farmers market tomatoes that can go in the compost right mm -hmm. and then we're using sort of a secret ingredient a lot of people maybe wouldn't pair this and we have a wild tarragon that grows in the area so what we're going to do is show you how to get that tarragon ready is that enough mm -hmm. okay so uh easiest thing to do right yeah. is we're just going to take our we want the leaves we don't want the stems so we just take our our stem and we pull those leaves off the stem and this is going to add flavor we're uh we do love to use our our earth salts and of course earth and natural salts uh very important but we want to keep that salt intake down uh because salt can uh increase uh blood pressure and um, cause Ooh. hypertension. So we want to use smaller amounts and really use those herbs to accentuate flavor. Uh, again, this is all about health and wellness, right? Yeah. So, so I just want to explain about herbs um, as a native. To some of these plants that we, we use, we heal people with, you know. So when someone is sick or whatever it is, that we would do rub or we make a tea in, into it. And that's our medicine. That's why I always call foodies our medicine. And that's what it is. This is where the concern, it was a big concern about how can we make a difference for a younger generation? Because today's generation is a little different. Um, the, the food, the wave that came in to where um, commodity came in, that changed a lot. And then another wave came in, it's like fast food. So everybody loves, you know, today we have a res on our reservation that we have McDonald, Taco Bell, all these things that we have, you know. I would love to see one day a native, a native um, food, a fast food, you know. We so. always talk about being able to drive up to the window and one of our elders is behind the window saying, how can I help you? Everything is sustainable. Everything is grown the way our ancestors grew them. Everything is organic. We don't need to use pesticides. Uh, and, and there's a native ideology, there's a native way of being. And when we feed people, we feed people. But it's not only the quality of the food that's so important, it's the person touching the food. And one of the things that we like to bring in is the love of our ancestors, the wisdom of our ancestors. And so Walter and I want to make ourselves pure before we cook because we want that to go into this food, right? Mm -hmm. We want that to the wisdom, the love. Uh, both my grandmas, even though they were different ethnicities, said the same thing. And the secret ingredient in all that we do is love. It's that caring for one another. And so no matter how little or how much we have, my mom always said, even if it's your last bite, if you share it, Creator will bestow more upon you. And that's because by sharing the little that we have, we will have more by that sheer essence of sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the native ideology is about sharing, even just the little that we may have. Uh, and if there's abundance, to share that abundance. So we love to call that in. We love to cook with that, right? Mm -hmm. You want to add your herbs? Yeah. And add, let's some, uh, add some salt to it. You know, it's okay. like making an offering here. And this is where the... You got to give back as, as a native way um, what the, the animals eat. You got to give it back to where it's able to, able to, to carry that a good journey and saying thank you to them. And it's been used that way. And that's, that's the way I was um, taught growing up. So here's our chilies. You can actually see a little condensation. That's completely normal, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to peel off this plastic because our chilies have been sweating and then you're going to watch how easy this comes off and so the skin the blackened skin starts to separate and then you can just take your fingers 
and peel that off. See how easy that comes off? You do a lot of these, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so we make uh, this dish and a, a plant-based version of the dish a lot. So, um, you know, it's about what you have, what you have access to, and uh, maybe what you can afford, right? Yeah. Uh, not everybody has access to all the ingredients. So don't be afraid to use what you have available. Use what's seasonal. And uh, um, you could use uh, any kind of rice. We're going to add a little quinoa today. Quinoa is an indigenous grain. And then once the chili is peeled, you can see that's really nicely peeled. I'm going to make an incision. And once I make an incision, you're going to see the seeds, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is just rinse those seeds out. That's where the heat is. So if you want a hot chili, you could leave them in. But we're going to get them out because we know these are locally grown. So we know they're going to be a little spicy. I'll peel a couple more, Chef. And do you want to add the quinoa? So quinoa is an indigenous grain to the Americas as well. And uh, this grain actually originated uh, with the Inca uh, in Bolivia and Peru. And now it grows as far north. Uh, as, as here and into the Dakotas. So it's again a very important indigenous grain. It has lots of protein and lots of nutrients. So you could use breadcrumbs, but then we'd be introducing the wheat that was introduced uh, by, at least in this region, by the Spanish. And I'm going to just talk about the four periods in our native history. So, you know, in native history, and I, I'm a little bit of an anomaly as a chef. Uh, I um, uh, pitched doing a cookbook and I was told by some of the publishers that uh, Native people don't have a cuisine. And I thought that that was really interesting because all of our European counterparts do. So I went back to school and I got my master's and my PhD. I guess you can never be too educated. And during my research and my doctorate, I looked back from about 10,000 years ago. Uh, recently, it was just released that they found uh, fossilized footprints here in New Mexico. And those fossilized footprints go back now, mm, scientists are saying 20, 23, 25,000 years. So even older than Western science thought, of course, in oral tradition, we know that our foods go back thousands and thousands, millennia. So, during my research, what I found was that we had a pre-contact diet, and that diet included wild game. It included lots of plants, roots, berries, medicinal plants, herbs, and that was the diet. And we also know that Native people traded, and they traded extensively. And we know this because scientists at the University of New Mexico found a vessel in Chaco Canyon, and in that vessel was theobromine, Theobromine is the marker for chocolate, telling us chocolate was in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, over a thousand years ago. So native people had trade routes. What are the modern versions of that? Some of our uh, UPS, FedEx, uh, United States Postal Service. We have an elder in the Northwest Coast who fishes for his salmon, he smokes his salmon, and he ships it to us, and in exchange, we ship to him. So the trade routes are still there. They're just being used a little differently than walking. So all of this made up the pre-contact diet. But history is as history is. And after 1492, there was contact with Europeans. And of course, Columbus Day, uh, an erroneous holiday here in the state of New Mexico, our governor has officially changed Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. So uh, we really acknowledge that, and that's really an important part of, of the acknowledgement because indigenous people gave foods to the rest of the world. But the thing you want to remember is we're all indigenous people. Everybody's indigenous to somewhere. And if we can reconnect with those roots and reconnect with who we are and what our ancestors did and why they came here, it unites us. You know, there's the medicine wheel, there's the circle, and we're all a part of that circle. We all live on Turtle Island. And it's really important as Earth people that we come together to work together, to feed each other, to nurture each other, to sustain this Earth, because it's all we have. 
It's really, really, really important. So we're going to delineate by saying pre-contact, all the foods that existed before contact. We will credit Columbus with facilitating an exchange of ingredients, bringing ingredients from here to what was called the old world. Uh, of course, that's a Euro perspective. If Native people were telling the story, uh, this would be the old world. But uh, remember, history is never objective. It's always subjective. So we have uh, foods going to uh, what was called or is called the old world and foods coming here. I think the biggest and most profound, and we, we, we delineate by saying first contact, the biggest and most profound is domesticated animals, dairy. We didn't have dairy. Uh, and did the ancestors try and milk lactating wild bison? Maybe. But what happens? The animals either run away or they charge you to protect their young. So no dairy. So the Italian tomato, first contact. The Irish potato, first contact. Navajo sheep, first contact. Stone fruit that's grown in northern New Mexico, our beautiful apples, first contact. So ingredients got introduced here as ingredients got introduced uh, in other parts of the world. Changing. Many food historians say 1491, 1492, 1493, the years the world began in terms of food. So much happened so quickly. So pretty fascinating. So we delineate pre-contact, first contact, in the case of native people, we're going to jump forward in history. We see uh, pilgrims coming to the East Coast. We see 13 colonies. We see industrialization. We see the U.S. government encouraging people to head westward. And uh, they offered free land. Oklahoma Territory uh, became the, uh, a place for that land. It, it's actually the only state uh, where there's an allotment system, a little bit different than the reservation system. And native people are displaced. And this is one of the most hurtful periods in our history as the United States. But we see the Trail of Tears, Walter's people had the long walk, many tribes just completely displaced. And whenever you're displaced, you lose your sense of what to harvest, when to plant, where to hunt. So the US government issued those commodities that you were talking mm -hmm. about. And lard, flour, sugar, coffee, and the infamous canned meat called Spam. So fry bread, which is really a pan-Indian food, is born from this government issue period, uh, beginning in the 1700s and going into the 1800s and early 1900s. So this is the most problematic. This is where we see the health disparities. This is where fry bread's perfectly fine if you eat it once a year, right? Yep. But if you eat it every day, it's like eating donuts every day. These are what we call sometimes foods. So we wanna, we actually do a no fry fry bread. So we take the same dough, we just don't fry it. We grill it on that beautiful grill that you saw us grilling the chilies. So pre-contact, first contact, and government issue. And then what we're doing is what we call the new native. And the new native is actually new ways. We love to make beautiful food with good flavor and plate it beautifully using uh, visual presentation and the culinary techniques that we have. And so the new native is really new ways of presenting our old food. And herein lies that circle again. Remember that native ideology. Everything is connected. You can't do one thing and not have it affect everything else. It's all connected. So we're going to get back to this. So we added our quinoa. Here's our beautiful chilies. You want to step over here sure. and I will just finish peeling that last chili. So uh, what Chef Walter's gonna do now is stuff these and we're gonna put them on this little beautiful tray here and they're gonna go in the oven and get heated and that uh, is going to be the meal, right? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. put this right here. First I usually put a little oil on it. That's the sunflower oil. Yeah, yeah. So then kind of Do that, put a little bit of salt. Then right now I'm gonna open up the, the chili here. So the chilies are our medicine, the way I, I look at things and, or maybe sometime things will happen to you with your, with your diet or whatever it is, or maybe there's something goes wrong with your, with your um, bones, be, you'd be in pain. It'd be, it'd be hurting. And so one day I realized, I said, I always hear a story of people, you know, 
um, about chili. And that medicine, I, I, what I did is I got um, jalapenos and um, rub on my, on my joints. And um, maybe like three, three, three times out, out of the week. Not even a week, I got rid of it. And then I started experiencing about what the old people talked about, the, the, the language that we use. And that big concern is where realizing that that's a, a direction that, I, that we're going with our native food and to help to teach the, the generation that, and then preparing a way for the, those that yet to come. And just something that, um, as a chef, it's up to us to teach the generation to bring back in another way, because things are happening, things are changing so quickly. And so we wanted to hang on not only the story, not only the songs and, or the culture, how about the food? The food is the most important ingredients that we use, everybody has to eat and to live, and how to respect the animals to, before they take, taking the animals down. So that's the, the, the culture that I um, realized and, and using, using my hand, you see, you, I'm using my hand instead of a spoon, you know? Be, touch it, touch it, feel, and you be able to smell, you know? And so that's, that's the, the way of, um, a native way that, that I was taught and how the grandma used, they used the ingredients. So this is all the, the medicines all in here that Lois talked about. So I just wanted to just share a little portion of it. That's something that, um, what you put in, that's where the story, the song, the feeling, make that food, you're gonna, um, they always tell us, you're gonna um, cure someone, whatever it is that they're going through in, in life, or maybe, oh yeah, that's how I grew up. That's how I remember to go back. A lot of our generation, you know, them, you don't get to see them coming back to the reservation. And this is just a, another way of giving it back. It's not only for native people, it's oh. all colors, you know? The, the, four, the four races of colors, uh, um, the, the, the yellow nation, the black nation, the white nation, the red nation, you know, that we, that we use and we util, u, utilize that. And when I start cooking my, my own native food, because, you know, I, I learned from others, that was good. But what is yours, Nihi? What's yours? What is there to, to, to give back? The educational way is that we were brought and to boarding school, of course, you know. Then we went to um, another school that we, we were raised there, and we, what we, what, whatever that you bring back, they always tell us, take it back to your people to share. And this is another way of not only my people, I share this food, and Lois and I, we share with all colors, all nations. Earth people, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. We love to say that. All over We're the all world. Earth people. Yeah. So, all over the world. And we have been all over the world. Uh, we've been to Russia, we've been to Ukraine, we've been to United Kingdom, and we've done. Uh, foods with the U.S. Uh, State Department uh, culinary diplomacy, um, using food as a form of diplomacy, using food and encouraging, you know, in Russia, they were trying to be like all different other nationalities. And we said, well, what do your babushkas make? What do your grandmothers make? And that those foods are what people come here to taste. So now that we've stuffed these beautiful chilies, we're gonna put them in the oven and let them heat up. And our potatoes are in the oven heating. And we're gonna show you how we would plate this and serve this as a, a, a wonderful meal. Yeah. So many of the recipes that we made today are in our book, which won the James Beard Award. I think we're both really proud of that. And Walter's actually cooked at the James Beard House in New York City. If you would like a book, you're welcome to order from our website and get a book. And be on the lookout, because we have a new book coming out. And that's going to be our Plant Forward Plant-Based book on the Magic 8. So that should be out in spring of 2023. 
And as in true fashion, uh, at least for us, right, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to end with a song. And we like to do that because it adds the, the heartbeat and it gives you something to carry with you and to carry on because we want all of you to carry on the work that you do and feeding each other and nurturing each other. And we want everyone to be healthy and well. And so <coughs> that's our wish. And so the drum will be that vibration, that song that you can carry with you. And you want to say a couple of words? Um, mostly my part is I cook behind, you know, more in the kitchen. That's where I, I do the, um, do my work back there, inventing um, a new recipes and all, all that through, through, throughout the year. And so I just want to be thankful for being, being here. And on behalf of um, anyone, our native people or, or anyone that wants to learn. And um, I'm opening my camp, um, welcome to my campfire and eat with me, sit down with me. I just want to say, and then I just want to end, end with the song here and put us all back in balance. Why we do this is we take an animal's um, a life away and we, we, they sacrifice for us and the plant that we use, it becomes our medicine and gives us a strength that we're able to, to carry on our mission, whatever it is that we need to do again, so. Also, when, you know, when we eat together, we become family. And so uh, we're connected in that way through the food. Uh, some, in some cultures, they say when you break bread, you're family. But, uh, for us, when you eat with us, you become a part of our family. And so uh, we want to be um, thankful for that, have gratitude, right? Yes. Anyway, so here goes. <coughs>